Welcome back to another episode of Unbound Book Babes. And this week we are going to talk about our top reads of 2023, which are going to be our 2024 recommendations for you. This is going to be an SJM free episode. So we both read the Crescent City series last year and we are leaving those books out. They are royalty and the books that we read last year, but they are just not something we want to cover because there's a lot of hype around that SJM and book three release of Crescent City. We will get there. Stay tuned for our episode covering recaps before you dive into CC3. But for this episode, we have chose each chosen three books that are separate from that universe, that world. So mind the timestamps. I will leave timestamps for each section and each book that we cover. There will be six total books. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be super disappointed. There's no SJM. Yeah. On the list. Well, <laughs> I'm a. Let me tell you, I'm gonna be blue in the face with my SJM stuff here in a couple of episodes. So, and it's actually really hard for me to have to talk about it because I'm listening to CC re-listening to Crescent City One right now, and I am at the epic part, the epic ending. It's all unfolding, and it's so hard to now pivot back to this because I was listening to that. I was crying before my shower, before I got ready to sit down (laughs) because I just got past the sacrifice of Lilibeth. And if you know, you know, and it is soul-wrenching. Pronounced? Lilaba? That's not how I said it for 10,000 pages. (laughs) How did you say it? Lahaba. Maybe that is how you say it. <laughs> Let's just cons- well, you know, no, 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 no. You're the one listening to the audiobook, so yours has to be right, right? Yeah, but I'm right, totally, right? <laughs> I'm totally second guessing <laughs> myself now. Say it again. Lilaba. Well, Lahaba. Lilaba. Damn, I don't know. I'm literally listening <laughs> to this whole book. Kristen. L e h a. B H A? Yeah, but like, let me go to some of my bookmarks. I just feel like it's important for you to know that I have a running track record of 0% of ever getting an SJM name correct. <laughs> Give me two seconds. Hold on. To do this, so, you are free. Lahaba. Yeah, Lahaba remain. Lahaba. My first time. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I've just listened to like almost all but two hours of this book and I still am saying it wrong. It's the first time I ever got an SJM name right. Anyways, enough of her. We just said it was an SJM free zone. We went on a tangent. Gonna go ahead and reel ourselves back in here. All right. So <laughs> just a quick recap of my 2023. Hold on. It's hotter than a hell's gate in here. Oh my God. <laughs> can't breathe with the door shut <laughs> all right let's hopefully that uh dissipates i'm gonna have to crack the window and it's the arctic outside right now sorry <laughs> it was like it's a lot <laughs> oh, man. okay i didn't need a third cup of caffeine before this episode <laughs> i did that's what i should have been spending my time on okay so Kristen do you want Bobby do you want me to go first for my books or are you good to go I mean I'm good to go but you can go first okay do you want to go first no you're okay you go (laughs) (laughs) all right so I am going to end up probably looking over here off camera quite a bit because this is where my notes are uh so my first choice um, in my top, probably my one is my, oh, dear. see, this is so hard. Out of the 40 some books that I read this year, um, this past year, almost 50 actually with a couple of rereads if you count them, Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So I read this on my Kindle 
It is a YA fantasy, and it does have LGBT supporting characters in it. It also won Goodreads Choice Award for Best Young Adult Fantasy in Science Fiction for last year, for 2023. This, I'm going to read the synopsis of this book. That way you guys have some context of what it's about. When two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection, they must face the depths of hell in a war among gods to steal their fate forever. After centuries of sleep, the gods are warring again. 18-year-old Iris Winnow just wants to hold her family together. Her mother is suffering from addiction and her brother is missing from the front lines. Her best bet is to win the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. To combat her worries, Iris writes letters to her brother and slips them beneath her wardrobe door, where they vanish. Into the hands of Roman Kit, her cold and handsome rival at the paper. When he anonymously writes back to Iris, the two of them forge a connection that will follow Iris all the way to the front lines of battle for her brother, for the fate of mankind, and love. Shadow on Bones meets lore in an epic enemies to lover fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak and the unparalleled power of love. So, a lot to unpack there. Yeah. But why I love this book so much is because it is so incredibly beautifully written. Like, some of the language that Rebecca uses, and to do, she describes something like no other. So, sorry, I was reviewing my highlights of trying to find, like, a quote as an example. I highlighted a lot of stuff. <laughs> It is like nothing seems like because profound out of context. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Hey, when that happens. Oh, here's one. I, as an example of some of like the beautiful writing that is in it, your grief will never fully fade. It will always be with you, a shadow you carry in your soul. It goes on to say, grief is a long, difficult process, especially when it is so racked by guilt. I don't know. It's just, it's so good. The writing in Divine Rivals is so eloquent and emotionally forceful. It is easily, I feel like it can easily, the way it's written and the descriptions that are given in the writing make me feel like it is, you could so easily decide that this is a modern, fantastical classic. Like, when you think about those old classic books that are written that, you know, Barnes & Nobles has, like, the special covers of all the old classics, and you just, you know that the way they use language is so much more eloquent. That is exactly how Divine Rivals is. And I love that it is rooted in the power of finding family and divinity by falling in love. The whole story is rooted in devastation and longing and as a spoiler alert for this whole series apparently last year i was a mood reader and that mood was <laughs> despair because <laughs> because so many of the stories that all three of them on this list for me there's so much despair and devastation in all of them so some of the tropes that you will find um in this story are faded mates enemies to lovers or nemesis i always felt like it was more nemesis to lovers um other things that you'll find in the story are gods ancient magic and kind of like world war ii era vibes for like the machinery and the clothing or at least that's what i picture because you've got you still got like typewriters and stuff so you're kind of dating your your technology in a way you know i spent a lot of 2023 and i read some really great stories um but one thing that i really want to look for in 2024 and it looks like i found it um was a book that was like crafted by a wordsmith because so many authors are excellent storytellers but to get lost in the words them like to craft such a sentence that you have to like set down your book and just like stare into space of like oh my god that's what i'm looking for in 2024 is like a wordsmith 
start here start here (laughs) yeah uh the second book was just released i believe it's supposed to be a duet i so i think it's just the two i could be totally wrong in that also so let me double check for the family good i'm not starting any more unfinished series yeah uh don't do that because same okay so let's see book two of two yeah the epic conclusion to an intensely romantic and beautifully written story that started in divine rivals ruthless vows just was just came out the 26th of december it has 4.5 stars out of 7.4 hundred no how do you say this numbers (laughs) it has 4.5 stars out of 7400 ratings on google and a 4.4 on goodreads out of 37 thousand reviews on goodreads that's book two that's amazing yeah that's book two that's That's crazy been out for less than a month correct two weeks yeah i wish i could whistle (laughs) it was a very anticipated release for good reason because i'm telling you so beautifully written do you want me to just like steamroll through all my stuff yeah i think that'd be great okay cool so the next one the darkness leave us in the just bear with you yeah like come on let me watch again. <laughs> Follow along. Don't let go. You'll get lost. <laughs> In qu- <laughs> quibbling depression. No wandering. <laughs> All right. The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schriefer. By Elliot Schriefer. I'm like 75% on that last name pronunciation. <laughs> so <laughs> I... I think you nailed it. Thanks. I, I listened to this one through Hoopla on audio, actually. Um, I was somewhere driving in Iowa this whole time. And why I find that so funny is because this is a young adult fantasy that is LGBT friendly. The um, I'm going to read the synopsis. And through the synopsis, you can kind of gleam what ends up happening and why. It's so the irony of driving through Iowa as I'm just playing this in my truck. <laughs> so <laughs> two boys alone in space. That's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> okay. Space, Iowa. What's the difference? Two boys. You know, there's <laughs> nothing to <major. laughs> After the first settler on Titan trips her distress signal, neither remaining country on Earth can afford to scramble a rescue of its own, and the two sworn enemies are installed in the same spaceship. Ambrose which give that clap for the name. What a great name. Ambrose wakes up on the coordinated endeavor with no memory of the launch. There's more that doesn't add up. Evidence indicates strangers have been on board. The ship's operating system is voiced by his mother and his handsome brooding shipmate is barricaded himself away. But nothing will stop Ambrose from making this mission succeed. Not when he's rescuing his own sister. In order to survive the ship's secrets, Ambrose and Kodiak will need to work together and learn to trust one another, especially once they discovered what they are truly up against. Love might be the only way to survive. A couple things about this book. I never saw the twist coming, like at all. And when I was listening, I felt so invested in the journey and hooked by the building despair because there's like a point where you're like, oh, well, this story's fucked <laughs> like <laughs> and you know if you're into tropes and stuff like that there's enemies to lovers forced proximity and there is a one bed situation but this is such an intriguing story because of everything that they go through and everything that they end up figuring out and their drive to f- overcome all of it it's fascinating it's really sweet. It's a very good love story. And I just highly recommend it because it wasn't actually something that I would have chosen to read based on like the cover and the title. Like it's not something that like, like really, I'm not into space stuff typically. Like I like astronomy and mythology and stuff like that and tying it in with different worlds and realms like that. But like space exploration, I was never like a Star Trek girly. Like I was never... 
like that and so i was like uh they're in a spaceship am i gonna like this and i loved it and it's actually encouraged me to maybe do a little bit more sci-fi um this year we'll see how that goes but (laughs) it's so good so good highly recommend the twist i was not expecting the ending did not see coming. Just one of those really great books for that reason. Yeah, that's always fun when you don't know what's going to happen or you're caught off guard. Did the did the ending like if it was a good twist, it made sense even if you didn't see it coming. Like the author didn't try too hard to like throw you off the trail. No, I thought it was really cleverly executed. Oh, that's fantastic. Once again, the best kind. Yeah, best kind of book. There's like these little Easter egg mysteries that you end up stalling with the the characters like when they figure it out you're like oh you know so you're like oh yeah that does make sense oh my gosh like it it fits together well (laughs) ah those are the best so my next and my final top read of 2023 and recommendation to our listeners is the bones of benevolence did I say it right this time? Uh, I think so, because I didn't. I didn't hear anything. It, yeah, I think I liked it better when you called it the bones of benevolence. <laughs> what is it? Right this time, benevolence. But, but you, you kept calling it benevolence, like a bl. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this book is by Lauren M. Leisure, and it is a crazy follow up to the first in the series, The Sin of Saints. Same thing here. Ow, it is in the head. <laughs> Whoops, too excited. <laughs> the same thing. First of all, like, I love her covers so much. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, and they're, like, soft. Like, they feel soft. They're very nice. Same thing here. When you talk about despair and <laughs> heartbreak and heartache... I cried several times in both my first reading of this and my reread. I originally read this on Kindle, uh, The Sin of Saints, and then I purchased it and read it before... I read half of it, actually, before this one came out, and then I read got this one. Did we get this in an advanced reader's copy? So, did you? I, yeah, you did. I did. So I got this as yeah. an ARC, and then I ended up purchasing it because... It's so good, and I'm so invested in the story, and it has one of the best cliffhanger endings, never saw it coming endings. She did a fantastic job with the ending. Um, So excited. So excited for this series. So this is a dark adult fantasy romance by an indie author. So the story follows Petra, who is a low-born individual, through this struggle of finding out who she is and being forced to become somebody's weapon. In the story, there is a lot of reconciling that happens, not just with the main character, but with some side characters. My favorite character in the story actually is a side character named Miles. He is getting his own novella that should be out in April, and it is called On Mast. So, big fan. We get to find out what happens to him, and then we will get the wrap-up to Petra's story and what I'm sure is to be an epic finale. So, since this is the second book in a series, I'm not going to actually cover the synopsis because I feel that the synopsis is a little bit spoilery for the first book if you haven't read it. So, definitely take some time to check out the Benevolence and Blood series by Lauren M. Leisure. That sounds great. I kept forgetting that The Bones of Benevolence was the second one every time you talked about it. I I always forgot about The Sin of Saints. Yeah, it's so good. I like the first one more than the second one, actually. Kristen. Yes, Bobby. Tell me about your books. All right. So... Um, remember we did a a wrap up or like a mid-year check-in with our favorite books thus far? Yeah. Haunting Adeline was on that list and it continues to stay on this list. I loved this book so much. And I know 
I know it got a lot of hate on TikTok, Goodreads reviews, just like everywhere. So many people hated this book. I loved it. I'm obsessed with it. Um, it might even be at the top of like a reread list for 2024. I don't know. Probably not. There's a lot going on in 2024. But um, <laughs> so if you haven't heard anything about it, I'll just go ahead and jump right into a synopsis. Um, following the death of her great-grandmother, Gigi, Adeline relocates to her ancestral home in Washington State, a place shrouded in mystery and whispers of the past. The story takes a chilling turn as Adeline begins to uncover the eerie and haunted nature of the family estate. She is quickly enveloped in the dark history that permeates permeates the walls of her new home, particularly the unsolved murder of Gigi. This tragic event, still casting a long shadow over the family, becomes a focal point for Adeline's journey. As Adeline delves deeper into the house's past, she finds herself entangled in a web of secrets and lies that have been carefully woven through generations. The novel masterfully blends elements of suspense, mystery, and supernatural, creating an atmosphere that is both haunting and intriguing. So that's the synopsis that the internet gave me. Um, if you have heard anything about Haunting Adeline, this left out all of the parts about her being stalked I was, by some crazy guy. I was just <laughs> going to say, I was like, is this the, isn't this about a stalker? Like, I thought this was about someone being stalked. Like... What? Yeah. I had no idea that that yeah. was the story. So it's like two stories in one because like while she's being stalked by this crazy guy, she's also being like haunted by her house and like her grandmother's memory and trying to figure out who killed her grandmother whilst also avoiding getting murdered herself. Interesting. Yeah. And then it's like a dark romance, so there's some crazy shit that goes down. Like, this isn't really a spoiler because it's all over TikTok, but she invites a guy over to her house. Um, and then her stalker cuts off that guy's hands and leaves him in a cute little box on her front porch. Being like, no other guy's allowed to touch you. Just a reminder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... I, you know, the main reason that people really hated it is because of, like, the hypocrisy of, of Zayd Meadows, the, the male main character. Um, and I'd love the element of just the hypocrisy of everybody involved, of everybody in the book. Um, I think that's kind of an overlying theme, underlying theme, is just the pure hypocrisy of human nature and the human soul. So I thought it was interesting. Everybody else really hated it. But hmm. the other thing I really loved about this book uh, is that it doesn't have, like, a happily ever after. So you know how, like, a lot of romance novels say, like, get together or whatever, and then it's, like, six months in the future, ten years in the future, and they're, like, married with kids, and they're little happily ever after, and it does, like, that big long wrap-up of, you know? Yeah. Um. This This doesn't do a happily ever after. This just, like, ends, and it's kind of like, we're happy right now. The story's over. Go home. Mm. <laughs> like, there's not a lot of falling action. And I was like, yep, I'm here for that. Just yeah. happy. Just happy right now. We don't know about ever, ever after. So I liked I liked that one. Next on the list is, <laughs> I named it the wrong thing in the show notes, but it is the Mindfuck series. Um, Mind Hunter is a Netflix show. Also very excellent. Highly recommend. But um, since this is about books, this is the Mindfuck series. So this is five books, and you can buy them as, like, one singular book. I think somebody went through, and a publisher, I guess, put them all together. Um, but I, yeah, it was five books. They're all, like, 200 pages. So it's, like, a super quick read. Super, super quick. Uh, the synopsis is... This series takes you through the dark journey of a serial killer getting revenge for the horrible things that were done not only to her, but her whole family. 
She plans every single detail to go through with this revenge, but what she never expects is to fall in love with the FBI profiler that is in charge of her case. So, who doesn't love a little gender reversal, right? How many female serial killers are out in the world? I actually recommended this series to you and hadn't even read it, and I still <laughs> haven't read it, and I keep going, why have I not read this? Like, I know, like, to read this. You know, I am very glad that you recommended it to me, and I really enjoyed it. However, it is very gruesome and grotesque and disgusting and descriptive of terrible things that happen to people. And this author did not, like, she didn't skip over anything. There's no fade to black. There's no, like, which it, it's... Which is why I haven't read it. <laughs> which is why I have not and read that, it. Yeah. A lot of people are like, what in the hell? Like, it's brutal in, like, the most terrifying way. Like, if this author was still alive, somebody should swing by and check up on them because that was rough. Wow. I do believe, I think it's S.T. Abby, and I do believe he or she has passed away. She, yeah. Yeah. It does It does definitely blur the lines of, like, morality and kind of has you questioning, like, your own morality and, I mean, you know, what does a badge really mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I feel like it. Uh, it kind of reads like a Criminal Minds episode where it's very analytical. Hmm. Um, about like the suspects and how like that FBI behavioral profiling, so it reads a lot like that. Of and so she, the serial killer uses that knowledge to kind of like set up her crime scenes so that people don't know it's her, or hmm. it's like sending the cops a different direction. So it's very like criminal mindsy that way. But honestly, just a great like femme fatale. Who doesn't love you know? Yeah. And speaking of a wonderful femme fatale, I don't know if you've ever checked out Reprisal on Hulu. Chef's Kiss. Another great femme fatale, if that's your if that's your thing. Definitely a must read. Eh, you know what? I can't I can't put either Haunting Adeline or the Mindfuck series. I loved them, but I would never recommend them to another living person. Ever. It's it's not like a book you can recommend. It's too much. Either you, you got to go to it of your own accord. I love that this is <laughs> our top reads of 2023 and our recommendations for 2024 and two of your three you don't actually recommend. <laughs> <laughs> loved them. And if you've loved anything else that I've loved, you might love it too. But ugh, I don't be hard pressed to recommend it's hard to recommend dark romances yeah if you're into that gonna dang, check them out yeah <laughs> <laughs> how about this if you think you've been desensitized to dark romance stuff that happens in books you should give these a go but this next one i recommend to everybody if you have a heart in your chest then Chestnut Springs is for you because it is so goddamn cute. <laughs> this one is another one. I believe it's four or five books. I think it's five books. I think the newest one just came out. Um, so the Chestnut Springs series by Elise Silver. Um, this series takes place in British Columbia near the Rockies. It's part of the same world as like the Gold Rush Ranch series, also by Elise Silver which I have not read yet, but I will be checking out in 2024. Each book follows a different couple in a series of connected standalone novels. The first book follows a bull rider and his unlikely relationship with his big city agent's daughter. The second follows the brother, a full-time cattle rancher, and his new live-in nanny. The third book follows the honorary third brother, an NHL hockey player, who rescues his childhood best friend after she f after her failed wedding. The fourth book features a hotshot bull rider, the new guy in the circuit, whose one night stand gets a little more complicated by a tiny plus sign. And the highly anticipated fifth installment follows the mysterious military brother, 
and his fake engagement with the girl next door. My hopeless romantic wants to read all of those right now. <laughs> Dude, they're so goddamn cute. So I accidentally started with book two. Um, and it is hands down probably my favorite romance book of all time. It is like, it's not too cheesy. The girl's not like stupid. I don't know what other word to use there. You know, like she's a fun, fiery redhead. You're going to love her. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't think about starting with the NHL hockey player one. <laughs> no, that one's a little sad. Oh, no. That one's a wee bit sad. I guess they're all a little sad, like, because everybody's heartbroken until they find true love in all of these. They're all a little sad. Pick your favorite. Start with any of them. <laughs> Start with any of them. Good to know. Will do. But in the second one, I will just say this is the funniest goddamn thing, and I've been laughing about it for almost a, a year now, because there's, like, an emergency, and they're going to the emergency room, and she's panicking, and she's, like, dumping out her purse, and a carrot falls out. And the guy's just like, why do you have a carrot in your purse? And he just, like, can't let it go. Like, all this stuff is crumbling around him, and he's just like, why is there a carrot in your purse? <laughs> Leave it to a guy to get microfixated on anything but the chaos at hand. <laughs> Sounds about that right. That was perfect. <laughs> so, those are our top reads of 2023, and our recommendations to you... Uh, if you can handle them, uh, feel free to take any of those recommendations and run with them on your TBR for the year. Our next episode is actually going to be covering some of our anticipated reads of this coming up year. So be sure to look out for that episode or head on over to that episode after this one and check it out and let us know your highly anticipated reads of 2024 whether they have been on your tbr forever or if they are new and going to be released this year so we look forward to hearing uh, any recommendations that you have as well be sure to leave them in the comments Check out in the description box below a link to our website where there are more book recommendations and the show notes. And if you actually do that, you will get a bit of a uh, hidden gem in the show notes. So if you end up going to the show notes and finding what it is, uh, let me know in the comments too. We will see you in the next episode. Until then, keep reading.